For the first time ever, we've got the opportunity to access uh, web content, video content from all around the world through um, podcasts and live web feeds. And you can have interviews with people on the other side of the world. You could be watching uh, content from Mars. Uh, who knows? There's a lot of opportunities and options out there uh, to support students in their classrooms. This, this content can be uh, interactive in the sense that there could be a live interview happening or students being able to post comments based on something they've just seen. Um, it makes it a very interactive and rich, dynamic environment. Well, uh, in term one or two, we were learning about the rainforest with Ben, so, and he showed us some video clips on YouTube about the anacondas and the lost tribes. Then I go to computer and watch some YouTube, learn about um, ancient Greek. I watch a little bit and then put some facts about ancient Greek. There is an abundance of videos available online now, whether it's YouTube or other websites. Um, that allow students to learn new content. And this is um, you know, particularly good because it suits students with different learning styles. Some, some prefer a text-based um, learning style and others prefer to sort of watch it in audio and video and, and learn that way. If you ask students, a lot of, a lot of what they learn has been learned on YouTube. Uh, last term, I used YouTube because we were doing a transport project. So I went on at home to see if I could find anything on like the crash tests of cars. So I went on and did, uh, I think it was the Bugatti Veyron crash test, and it came up with a couple of things, and it helped me with like the safety part of the project. Well, I use YouTube at school to find out how to do science experiments, and at home sometimes I look up on YouTube math equations and that, so then I get smarter at maths and science. Unfiltered internet allows teachers to um, engage in their own professional development through watching video content on, on websites including YouTube. Um, a lot of my professional development is done through um, following people on Twitter and they provide links to uh, articles and web pages that have video content uh, including YouTube and um, by watching those clips um, provides me with a lot of information that I need to support my own classroom pedagogy and uh, curriculum knowledge and uh, you know a place to start with um, students. In my situation I had to fill in a year 10 multimedia class for a term because the teacher was away and the class involves me teaching Adobe Illustrator. Um, in order to accomplish the, the task required I uh, searched for YouTube videos. I found 23 YouTube videos which are better on Moodle. The kids have access to Moodle at home. So what we did was uh, we looked at one or two videos per lesson as a class together. We were students and we worked to emulate those videos. But that's because we had the unfiltered internet allowing us to tap into uh, resources. This technology is here. Our students are using it and um, they're very familiar with it. So we shouldn't really be debating this anymore. It's not a matter of um, if teachers adopt this technology, more a case of, of how and how soon. Um, the question is, are we limiting our students' learning potential by, by not giving them access to this um, technology?